tonight. For more on Honduras, we are joined by Hillary Clinton and the legacy of the 2009 coup. Um, Dana Frank is professor of history at the University of California, Santa Cruz, and an expert on human rights and U.S. policy in Honduras. Professor Frank, it's great to have you with us. Well, um, Hillary Clinton said a lot in this five-minute exchange with Juan Gonzalez. Respond. Well, I just want to say this is, like, breathtaking that she'd say these things. I think we're all kind of reeling that she would both defend the coup and defend her own role in supporting its stabilization in the aftermath. I mean, first of all, the fact that she says that they did it legally, that the Honduras uh, Judiciary and Congress did this legally is like, oh, my God, just mind-boggling. The fact that she then is going to say that it was not an unconstitutional coup is I incredible, when she actually had a cable that we have in the WikiLeaks, in which U.S. Ambassador to Honduras Hugo Lorenz says it was very clearly an illegal and unconstitutional coup. So she knows this from day one. She even admits in her own statement that it was the Honduran military that she says, well, this was the only thing that was wrong there, that it was the military that took Zelaya out of the country, as, a, as opposed to it somehow that it was an illegal thing we did, that the, that the Honduran government did, deposing a president. I want to turn to that WikiLeaks cable on Honduras. The U.S. Embassy in Tegucigalpa, the capital of Honduras, sent a cable to Washington on July 24, 2009, less than a month after the coup. The subject line was, open and shut the case of the Honduran coup. The cable asserted, quote, there is no doubt that the events of June 28, 2009 constituted an illegal and unconstitutional coup, unquote. The embassy listed arguments by supporters of the coup to claim its legality and dismissed each of them, saying, quote, none has any substantive validity under the Honduran constitution. The embassy went on to say the Honduran military had no legal authority to remove President Zelaya from office or from Honduras. The embassy also characterized the Honduran military's actions as an abduction and kidnapping that was unconstitutional. Again, this was the U.S. embassy memo that was sent from Honduras to Washington. Well, I want to make Professor sure that the listeners understand how chilling it is that the leading presidential, a leading presidential candidate of the United States would say this was not a coup. The second thing is that she's baldly lying when she says, we never called it a coup, we didn't, because that would mean we have to suspend the aid. Well, first of all, they repeatedly called it a coup. We can see State Department's all over statements for months calling it a coup and confirming, yes, we call it a coup. What she refused to do was to use the phrase military coup, so she split hairs because Section 7008 of the State and Foreign Operations Appropriation Acts for that year very clearly says that if it's a military, if it's a coup invo significantly involving the military, the U.S. Has, has to immediately suspend all aid. So she, they decided to have this interpretation that it was a coup, but not a military coup. So th she, Hillary Clinton, and Obama, for that matter, I want to make clear, in violation of U.S. law that very clearly said, if there's a coup, they have to cut the military aid and the other, all other aid to the country, she, they, she violated the law, decided, well, it wasn't a military coup, when, of course, it was. It was the military Terry put it on the plane, which she says in her I mean, the statement. memo is very clear. The, the, well, the Ugo Lorenz cable is very clear. But look, even in what she said on Saturday, she says, well, the military put him on the plane. That was the only problem here. She's admitting it was a military-led coup, and that in violate. So therefore, she's in violation of the law. So was Obama by not immediately suspending the aid. And, and here she's saying, well, we never called it a coup. I mean, hello, we have so many public statements in which the State Department called it a coup. In March 2010, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton traveled to meet with the Honduran President Porfirio Pepe Lobo, whose election was boycotted by opponents of the coup that overthrew Zelaya. Hillary Clinton urged Latin American countries at the time to normalize ties with the coup government. We think that uh, Honduras has taken uh, important and necessary steps uh, that uh, deserve the recognition and the normalization of relations. Uh, I have just sent a letter to the Congress of the United States notifying them that we will be restoring aid to Honduras. Uh, other countries in the region uh, say that, uh, you know, they want to wait a while. Uh, I don't know what they're waiting for, but that's their right to wait. That was Hillary Clinton um, in 2010, Professor Frank. 
Um, I mean, what she did at the time was she played out the strategy. Obama and Clinton played out the strategy that they would delay negotiations. They treated Micheletti, the post-coup dictator, as an equal partner to a Democratic elected President Zelaya, moved the negotiations into a sphere they could control, and then delayed it until the already scheduled elections in November. The problem was, as you say, is that this, the, this almost all the opposition had pulled out of that election. All international observers, like the Carter Center or the UN, had pulled out, refusing to observe that election. The only observers were the U.S. Republican Party, and saying that this was not a legitimate election. And then the very first, that day, even before the polls closed, the U.S. recognizes the outcome of the election. And this is what we used to call a demonstration election. Let's just have any election and call this over and call that election, call that le election legitimate. Also in 2010, at the annual meeting of the Organization of American States, member nations remained divided over whether to allow Honduras back into the OAS. Honduras was expelled from the body the year before, after the military coup ousted Zelaya. This is Hillary Clinton then. Our ongoing discussions about Honduras makes clear the urgency of this agenda. As we emphasized, when the United States, along with the rest of the hemisphere, condemned the coup in Honduras, these interruptions of democracy should be completely relegated to the past. And it is a credit to this organization that they have become all but non-existent in the Americas. Now it is time for the hemisphere as a whole to move forward and welcome Honduras back into the inter-American community. In her memoir, Hard Choices, Democratic presidential hopeful Hillary Clinton wrote about the days following the 2009 coup in Honduras that ousted uh, the democratically elected president, Mel Zelaya. She wrote, quote, In the subsequent days, I spoke with my counterparts around the hemisphere, including Secretary Espinosa in Mexico. We strategized on a plan to restore order in Honduras and ensure that free and fair elections could be held quickly and legitimately, which would render the question of Zelaya moot. Unquote. That was from the hardcover version of Hillary Clinton's memoir. That section was later removed from the paperback version. The well, significance of this, I mean, Professor it's incredible Frank. this woman is a presidential candidate, that she's doing like things like this. The fact that she would say, we wanted to render the question of Zelaya moot. We wanted to bury the democratically elected president's existence and act like the coup didn't have it happen. I mean, that's why it's so terrifying that today, or rather on Saturday, she would say, she would defend this, this coup, say it wasn't a coup, and defend her actions in, in, um, in, in Installing this terrifically horrific, scary post coup regime. And of course, that she would cut that out of her memoir in the, in the paperback version is also very scary. Can you talk about the significance of Hillary Clinton's stance then? And let's remember, um, she was Secretary of State serving the president, the president, of course, Barack Obama. What responsibility does the Secretary of State have in this? And what did it mean for Honduras right up through today? Well, Obama handed Latin America over to the over to her and allowed her to to um, carry forward this policy. I mean, it was certainly Obama made some noises the very first day or two, and then after that was largely silent and handed over to Secretary of State Clinton. Clearly, he was her boss. If he didn't approve of this, it wouldn't have happened. And um, so, I think it's really important when we talk about Hillary Clinton, the candidate, what she's doing, to also talk about Obama's responsibility for that and Obama's responsibility for what's happened since, because I think, as a lot of people know. That that coup and the illegitimate election that followed it, that Hillary Clinton is celebrating so clearly in her statements, opened the door to this complete, almost complete destruction of the rule of law on Honduras. People hear about, oh, the gangs and violence and drug traffickers are taking over. Well, that's because the post-coup governments, both of Micheletti, Lobo, and now Juan Orlando Hernandez, have completely destroyed the rule of law because they're in cahoots with these various or f forms of organized crime and drug traffickers and violence and against the Honduran people. So this whole post-coup regime has also led to this tremendous corruption of the judiciary and the police and the military, for that matter. So that's just 
what's happened to Honduras, it's not just like they're randomly violent people down there. This is a U.S. supported regime, the aftermath of the coup. If you look at all these statistics, yes, there was no, it's not like there was a golden age before the coup, but this, this tremendous destruction of the basic rule of law in Honduras. So I want to go to what happened most recently in Honduras. Last month, gunmen assassinated Berta Cáceres, a well-known Honduran dissident, winner of the prestigious 2015 Goldman Environment Prize. They assassinated her in her home. In 2014, Berta Cáceres spoke about Hillary Clinton's role in the 2009 coup with the Argentine TV program Resumen Latinoamericano. We're coming out of a coup that we can't put behind us. We can't reverse it. It just kept going. And after, there was the issue of the elections. The same Hillary Clinton, in her book, Hard Choices, practically said what was going to happen in Honduras. This demonstrates the meddling of North Americans in our country. The return of the president, Mel Zelaya, became a secondary issue. There were going to be elections in Honduras. And he or she, Clinton, recognized that they didn't permit Mel Zelaya's return to the presidency. There were going to be elections. And the international community, officials, the government, the grand majority accepted this, even though we warned this was going to be very dangerous and that it would permit a barbarity, not only in Honduras, but in the rest of the continent. And we've been witnesses to this. That was Honduran environmentalist, indigenous activist Berta Cáceres speaking in 2014, murdered last month in her home in La Esperanza, Honduras. Talk about what Berta Cáceres said and the significance of her assassination, this horror that took place in Honduras, what she, why she was so prominent and um, top of the target list in Honduras. Well, Berta Cáceres was this amazing, um, inspiring indigenous leader and environmental activist. Did also, you know her? I, yes, I did. I didn't know her very well personally. We, I'd spent time with her in San Francisco and Oakland when she got the Goldman Prize last year. Um, I remember first meeting her when she had gotten a phone call about uh, the botched autopsy of the uh, people that were killed by the DEA in Honduras. And, of course, her. we don't even know the results of her own autopsy today, so the ironies of that are, are really chilling. I mean, she was so inspiring and so beautiful. If people Google Berta Cáceres, you'll see in every picture she's glowing. You can just feel her presence. And it is, of course, this tremendous heartbreak for all of us. And I want to make sure people understand that this is the this is the biggest assassination since the coup. There have been hundreds of people that have been assassinated, both by the state security forces and by private actors and death squads, but they never touched the top leadership of the opposition. And Berta wasn't just an indigenous environmental leader. She was a top leader of the opposition. In fact, when the, the resistance came to came to the length of uh, territory, she gave this beautiful speech welcoming everybody. That was one of the most beautiful speeches I've ever heard. And so, what's going on now is the fact. And she was so internationally renowned. Uh, uh, speaker, uh, speaker of the House, excuse me, ranking Democrat in the House of Representatives Nancy Pelosi gave a whole reception in her honor last year. And we, we did everybody did everything they could to protect Berta, and she was still assassinated. And this is a clear message message by the Honduran elite, by the Honduran government, by the Honduran right, that they'll kill anybody now. And th that's—I want, pe want people to understand how terrifying that is, that everybody in Honduras now feels they can kill be killed, no matter how famous they are. Hmm. Well, on Sunday, Bill Clinton, the former president, spoke at the New York Hall of Science in Corona, Queens. He was interrupted by protesters who were shouting in Spanish, Hillary Clinton, you have Berta's blood on your hands. Um, today we went to protest um, an event uh, that was appealing to Latino communities to support Hillary Clinton at the Hall of Science in uh, Corona, Queens. And we um, uh, had a banner that said, Hillary has blood on her hands, and we were removed by the police immediately. Protesters chanting, Hillary, we don't forgive, Hillary, we don't forget, when Bill Clinton spoke at the New York Hall of Science in Queens this weekend. Professor Frank. 
Well, I mean, it's so beautiful to see the protests and, and to understand that there's a tremendous critique of U.S. policy in Honduras that's been going on since the day of the coup that doesn't get covered at all in the press. Why did um, the U.S. support the coup? Ah, there's a big question. I mean, I think it's I think it's really un about the U.S. pushback against the democratically elected governments of the left and the center left that came to power in Latin America in the in the 90s and the two in the 2000s. Um, Venezuela, Bolivia, Argentina, um, Ecuador, Chile, El Salvador, all these countries. And Zelaya was the weakest link in that chain. He himself did not come out of a big social movement base at the time of his election. Certainly since the coup. Um, and I think they were, the U.S. was looking for a way to push back about that, against that. There's a very important military base, U.S. military base, Sotokano Air Force Base. Um, in Honduras, and Honduras has always been the most captive nation of the United States and Latin America. So I think they were testing what they could get away with, and they got away with it. It was the first domino pushing back against democracy in Latin America and reasserting U.S. power in service to a transnational corporate agenda. Your final comment, Professor Frank, in this 2016 presidential election year and in looking at U.S. policy towards Latin America and well, Honduras. We certainly need to hold Hillary Clinton. Uh, responsible and to say how terrifying and chilling it is that she would defend a military coup. Like, who is it that we're talking about here? Um, and the second thing is to also see that this isn't just about Hillary Clinton. It's about Obama. It's about Vice President B Biden, who's in charge of Latin America policy now. And it's about Secretary of State John Kerry. They are very clearly celebrating and supporting and giving increased funding to the current government of Juan Orlando Hernandez that is is continuing this war against the Honduran people. I mean, he's a dictator. He has overthrown parts of the Supreme Court and uh, legally named a new Supreme Court that's full of allegedly corrupt figures. He has he backed the coup. He uh, legally named a new attorney, led the legal uh, naming of a new attorney general, and he has admitted to stealing. Uh, uh, we don't know the exact amount, into the tens of millions of dollars from the National Health Service and siphoning it off into his own campaign. I mean, this is a criminal that we, the United States is supporting in office. Dana Frank, I want to thank you for being with us, professor of history at the University of California, Santa Cruz, expert on human rights and U.S. policy in Honduras.